KD all day. Percents are a fundamental topic on the GMAT. That means you're going to have to understand them if you want to get easy questions. You're going to have to understand them if you want to get hard questions. But it also means that if you truly master your understanding of percents, the hard percent questions are not that much different than the easy percent questions. And the way you master percent questions is by understanding your fundamental percent translations. And you will always hear me talking about this, not just for percents, but for really any question on the quant section. I am always trying to translate words into numbers or words into algebra. And so in the case of percents, what does that mean? And this is not an exaggeration. What that means is that my brain is only smart enough to understand or mathematical operations. And therefore, the only symbols that I want to see on my page are plus sign, minus sign, multiplication sign, or the division sign, whatever this thing is called. And any other symbol I want to put in terms of one of these. And so that includes the percent symbol. And so if I were to say to you, for example, what is 50% of 60? Now you might just reflexively say, oh, that is equal to 30. But subconsciously, really what your brain did was say, this percent sign here is meaningless. And the same is true about this of here. What this percent sign really means is 50 divided by 100. The percent sign means divide by 100. And then of means multiply. And so 50% of 60 is 50 over 100 times 60. And 50 over 100 is one half. So this is just one half times 60. And that is equal to 30. Now, this might seem like overkill for a simple question like this one. But the reason that I do it isn't for these simple questions. It is for the more complex ones. And so let's go through our fundamental present translations that you want to know. And so these are your fundamental percent translations. I would say you want to know all of these before moving forward. And so if you have to go back to the foundation videos that I made, uh, there should be plenty more questions practicing your fundamental percent translations. We will go through the basic ones though right now. And so starting with just X percent itself, in other words, 20 percent is not equal to 20. So do not make that mistake. And X percent is not equal to X. Don't make that mistake. 20% is equal to 20 over 100, which is equal to 0.2. And the same goes for X. X percent is equal to X over 100. And what does percent of mean? So if I were to say 20% of 30. So 20%, that means 20 over 100 times so of means times 30. And this would just be one fifth times 30, which is equal to 30 over 5, which is 6. And so this also means I were to say, what is X percent of Y? Well, that would just be X over 100 times Y, or XY over 100. If I was to say, what is X percent of Y percent? What would that be? That would just be X over 100 times Y over 100, which is equal to XY over 10,000. Because 100 times 100 is 10,000. What about a percent increase? So a lot of times, if I say, you have X of something and then you increase it by 20%, people just instinctively say, oh, that means 1.2x, but how do you get there? Well, you're saying if I have a 20% increase, you started with X of something, and then you increase that amount by 20% of X, which is 0.2x, and that's how you get X plus 0.2x, which is 1.2x, and that would be your how much you would have after your 20% increase. What about a percent decrease? And same thing, I think sometimes people here just memorize, oh, that's when you do the one minus thing, but how do we get there? So if I have a 20% decrease, I'm saying I started out with X of something, and then I decreased it. If I subtracted 20% of X from it, to end up with just 0.8X. And so a 95% decrease is going to be the same as taking 5% of. A 30% decrease will be the same as taking 
70% of. What about percent change? So the formula for percent change is just new minus old over old. In other words, you are finding, you're just taking the difference, your change as a percentage of what you started with. And so if you start out with 20 people in a room and then you increase it to 30 people in a room, what is your percent change? Well, it's just 30 minus 20 over 20. And so we went up by 10 people. And so as a percentage of what we started with, it should be 10 over 20, which is a 50% change. And so really it's 30 minus 20 over 20 times 100. If you want to get the nominal value and not just the decimal value, so that would be 30 minus 20, 10 over 20, which is 0.5 times 100. This would be a 50% increase because 10 is 50% of 20. And so those are your fundamental percent translations. Know how to make these, know how to make them backwards and forwards. Know how to make them when they give you numbers as well as when they give you variables. And because that is really how they take easy and medium percent questions and make them hard is instead of giving you numbers, they give you variables because then they are minimizing the chance that someone can just plug in numbers and accidentally stumble upon the right answer. You really need to understand how percents work. And so every question we do should build upon these fundamental percent translations. So understand them.